Hello and welcome to this EC2 lab tutorial. Today I'll be guiding you through the basics of launching and managing Amazon EC2 instances. So whether you're a beginner looking to get started with cloud computing or someone who wants to brush up on their skills, this tutorial will provide you with a solid foundation. But before you begin with the session, make sure that you have subscribed to our channel and clicked on this bell icon so that you may never miss an update from us. So in this session, we'll learn about what exactly is an EC2 instance. Then we'll go through the ways of connecting to an EC2. After that, we'll discuss a use case of an EC2 instance considering a scenario. And then finally, we'll roll up our sleeves and dive into the console. We'll demonstrate how to launch an EC2 instance, connect to your instance, and finally manage and terminate it. So let's dive in. So you might have heard about Amazon EC2, but aren't quite sure what it is. Let's break down. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, which is a part of Amazon Web Services or AWS for short. Basically, EC2 lets you rent virtual servers in the cloud, which you can use to run your applications without having to worry about managing physical hardware. Now these virtual servers are called EC2 instances. You can think of an instance as a powerful computer that you can start up whenever you need it and shut down when you don't. You can choose different types of instances based on what you need, whether you need more processing power, memory or storage. And you know what's cool about EC2 is that it's super flexible. You can scale up if you need more resources during busy times and scale down when things are quieter, all without any long-term commitments. Plus AWS provides a range of operating systems to choose from. So you can use whatever you're comfortable with, like Linux, Windows or others. In short, EC2 is like having your own data center in the cloud giving you the power and flexibility to run your applications efficiently and cost effectively. Cool, right? Now let's talk a bit about how to access an EC2 instance. There are four ways. The first is through AWS Management Console, where you can configure and manage your instances in your browser. Then there is EC2 Instance Connect or EIC, which allows you to use IAM policies to control SSH access into your instances, removing the need to manage the SSH keys. There's also using a secure shell or SSH and remote desktop protocol or RDB. SSH is used for Linux EC2 instances and RDB is used for Windows EC2 instances. This allows you to establish a secure connection to your instance from your local laptop or PC. This option requires a key pair, which consists of a private key and a public key to ensure that secure connection. Once you have your key pair, you can connect via SSH using a client on your computer that uses the private key to connect to the EC2 instances public key. Then finally, there is session manager in the systems manager. This allows you to manage your instances via the browser or the AWS CLI. Now let's move forward and explore a practical use case of an EC2 instance. We'll consider a scenario involving Emily, who is a seasoned DevOps engineer at Innovative Web Solutions and is working on a revolutionary online learning platform. To support the development and initial deployment of this platform, she has provided a detailed set of requirements for her web server. Emily's requirements are designed to balance cost effectiveness with performance and security. As the infrastructure team, it's our job to set up an EC2 instance that meets her specifications. So these are the requirements provided by Emily for setting up an Amazon EC2 instance in AWS. The EC2 instance will serve as a web server for the initial deployment and development of the revolutionary online learning platform. You can take a look at these details because we'll be using it to create the EC2 instance. So without any further delay, let's dive in. Let's log into our AWS management console. I've already logged in. This is the homepage of the console. In the search bar, search for EC2. Click on this. If 
first of all, you should know that EC2 is a region specific service. So make sure that you're in the right region in which you want to provision your virtual servers. Since we want the North Virginia region, we have already selected the region as North Virginia. Now on the EC2 dashboard, click on the launch instance button. Now here, provide a unique name to your instance. We'll name it IPS Web Server according to Emily's requirement. Next, you have to choose an AMI that fits your need. An AMI is like a ready-made package of software that includes an operating system, applications, and configurations. Now these are some popular choices like Amazon Linux. It's a free and reliable Linux version that's great for general use. Also, it's good for beginners. Then you have Ubuntu, which is another popular Linux version known for being flexible and having a big community of users. You also have Windows Server, which is a Microsoft Windows version for running Windows applications. We're going to choose Amazon Linux here as it is cost effective, well integrated with AWS services, and also perfect for Emily's need. Here under the section of my AMIs, you can create your own custom AMIs of your own choice. Also, if you don't find what you need, you can browse for more AMIs. Now select an instance type. Instance type basically defines the computing resources like CPU, memory, storage, which are allocated to your instance. You have to consider some factors when choosing an instance type. First is the workload requirement. Choose an instance type that can handle your application's processing needs like CPU, memory. Then also consider the cost. Instance type with higher resources are generally more expensive. You can start with smaller instances type like T2 Micro, which is eligible for free tier and also you can scale up if you need. So we'll be selecting T2 Micro as it is eligible for free tier and it is budget friendly option. You can just click on this button if you want to see other options available. So these are the other options and we have selected T2 Micro. Now. Now here you either have to create a new key pair or use an existing one. You can use a key pair to securely connect to your instance. So we are gonna create a new key pair and name it IPS key according to Emily's requirement. And then we have to select the key pair type. So RSA uses larger and slower keys, which is more secure for now. While ED25519 uses smaller and faster keys. So we'll be selecting RSA as it is more compatible with the systems and applications. Then we select the format of the private key. We'll be selecting .pem as we'll SSH into the instance. You can also select the .ppk format, which is used by Putty, which is a popular SSH client for Windows. Then you can click on create key pair. So it's creating a key pair and it will be downloaded in the downloads folder and save. So it has shown that it is successfully downloaded. Moving on, let's configure the network settings. Here you can either create a new VPC or selecting an existing one. A VPC is basically that provides a logically isolated network segment within your AWS cloud account. So we're going to choose test VPC and we're going to select a subnet in that VPC. A subnet is basically a smaller partition within a VPC. It defines the available IP address range for your instance and helps control network traffic flow. Next, we'll enable this auto assign public IP option to make your instance accessible over the internet. Now we're going to create a new security group. So security groups basically acts as a virtual firewalls, which controls access to your instance. So we're just going to click on create security group and give it a name. Let's say IPS security group. You can also provide a description if you want. Now here you have to specify some rules. By default, all traffic is blocked. You need to add rules to allow specific types of traffic. So we'll allow SSH access to our instance. SSH works on port 22. 
Now we have to specify the source address from where we want to allow this SSH connection. You can also select my app IP if you want to allow SSH access only from your current public IP. We're going to select anywhere since we want public access. Next, we're going to create a new security group rule. Now, since Emily wants to set up a publicly accessible app, so we will consider the HTTPS option. Which works on port 443. Now, please note that the digital certificate is crucial for HTTPS as it enables encryption, authentication and data integrity. So after obtaining and installing the certificate, you can just configure the security group to allow traffic on port 443 and then test the setup to confirm that HTTPS is working. Now for a digital certificate, Emily's app developer will take care of that. So we'll just move forward. Now this is where you can set up the configuration parameters. First part is the number of instances. By using these arrows, you can increase or decrease the number of instances. Since we need only one instance, so we're gonna choose one. Also, you can review the summary of all the details that you have entered over here. Lastly, we need to add storage to this instance. So this is the elastic block storage commonly referred to as EBS storage that we are attaching to this instance. So this volume type is being referred to as root volume. Root volumes are the ones on which you install your operating system and other application packages. So we are attaching 12 gigabytes of volume to this instance for creating a balance between cost and space, ensuring there is enough room for their software and data without incurring unnecessary cost. So that's it. You'll just click on launch instance. The web server is now being provisioned, ready to host the innovative web application. This just takes a few seconds. So it has successfully initiated the launch of instance. So now if you scroll down, we can click on view all instances. It's loading the instances. And this is it. We have successfully created our instance called IPS web server. Its state is running and you can see the status check, which is initializing. So now you can just refresh the page. And you can see the status check it's passed now if you select your instance you can see all the details of it all the attributes that you see here in the description tab are essentially the configuration parameters that we supplied during the process so here you can see the public ipv4 address that is assigned to it so we'll be using this public ipv4 address to connect to our instance so let's copy this address now let's move on and see how to access the server's terminal. So if you're using a Mac terminal or you have an SSH client, you can directly do an SSH with the key that was downloaded earlier. But if you're using a Windows terminal that does not come with a default SSH client, so you can use PuTTY to connect to the server. Since we're using a Mac terminal, we'll just go and click on iTerm. So this is our terminal. Now here, make sure that you're in the right directory in which you have downloaded your key. So since our key is in the downloads folder, so I'm just gonna move into the downloads folder by using the cd command. So we're in our downloads folder. Next, we're gonna change the permissions on this key to allow us to SSH into the EC2 instance. For changing the permission, we're going to use the command chmod400 and then we're going to type the name of our key. So we're going to type chmod400 and since the name of our key is IPS key dot pem, press enter. Okay. Now we can SSH into our instance using this command, which is SSH-I, the name of our key that is IPS key.pem. Then we're going to type EC2-user at the rate and then our IPv4 address. 
Now here the SSH command initiates a secure connection to the remote server. The dash i option specifies the identity file that is the private key to be used for the SSH connection. And then this the ipsk.pem is basically the private key that you downloaded earlier. And here this address is basically the address that specifies the user and the address of the remote server. So I have zoomed into my terminal and after I have entered the SSH command, I'm going to type yes. Enter. And that's it. We have successfully connected to our terminal and we have successfully SSH into our instance using our Mac terminal. Now I'm going to show you how to stop and terminate an EC2 instance. Knowing how to properly shut down your instance is crucial to avoid unnecessary charges. So you just need to select your instance click on the instance state and click on stop instance. Now this is basically the confirmation dialog box for stopping your instance, which basically states that while the instance is stopped, you will not be charged for early instance usage, but you will be charged for the EBS volumes and any other resources that are associated with this instance. So if you want to proceed, you just need to click on stop. And you see you have successfully stopped your instance. Stopping an instance is great for temporary shutdowns, but what if you're done with it completely? That's where terminating an instance comes in. Terminating an instance will delete it permanently. So make sure that you don't really need it anymore before doing this. Again, you just need to select your instance, click on instance state and click on terminate instance. Now this is basically a confirmation dialog for terminating your instance which states that any data on your instance ephemeral storage will be lost while the data on the EBS volume will be preserved but may incur charges if not deleted. So click yes if you want to terminate your instance and you see you have successfully terminated your instance. So now that your instance is terminated it will be removed from your list of instances. Remember once an instance is terminated it cannot be restarted and any data on it will be lost unless you've backed it up somewhere. So this is how the infrastructure team at Innovative Web Solutions has created an EC2 instance named IPS Web Server. Now that this instance is up and running, Emily and her application team can access it to set up the web server and install their application for global availability. This EC2 instance setup fulfills all of the Emily's requirements, ensuring a balance between cost effectiveness performance and security. So this concludes our session for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Thank you for watching. See you next time.